Hey everyone, Rua here with a new entry in what I'm calling the editorial series. In this series I'm going to discuss issues around game mechanics, jobs, and other matters to break them down and to also give you my opinion on them. What I'm tackling this time is how valid is Ninja as a legitimate endgame tank. Ninja's tanking style is largely different from the two premier tank jobs, the Paladin and the Rune Fencer, but having played around with it some more lately, I've been quite impressed with it. At the core of their job designs, Paladins excel at mitigating physical damage, and Rune Fencers excel at mitigating magic damage, so where does a ninja fit between them, if it does at all? Ninjas excel at not getting hit at all, hindering their targets to help them do so. Ninja also really shines in that it doesn't feed much TP to its target given the insane amount of subtle blow it has access to, comfortably putting it at the cap. I mentioned this in my recent ninja guide, but I really should elaborate on it here. When it's paired with other jobs with this trait, monks and dancers especially, you seriously notice the TP frequency of your target slowing down. I found this to be a very effective strategy when facing targets who either have nasty TP attacks, or who otherwise absorb damage during set attacks. Take Kin here for example. We've only got a ninja and a monk attacking him, as this gives us a means of getting around his absorption mechanic by pretty much not letting him weapon skill at all. Ninja's durability is the stuff of legend, but all the durability in the world won't mean anything if you're not on top of your target's hate list. Ninja's hate retention is dependent on it maintaining Yonin stance, keeping on top of its Utsuzemi shadows, and dealing a stream of damage if fighting alongside other frontline jobs. Utsuzemi spells generate a good chunk of hate when they're cast under Yonin stance, enough to get hate back a lot easier than I thought it would be actually. I only lost hate in this clip because that's how you negate Kin's target and 11th dimension, by making it switch target. In the previous run, I actually made the mistake of getting too much hate, and subsequently the other DPS could not get Kin off me. That was a fun run. <laughs> Given how dependent a ninja's tanking style is on effectively slowing down its target, this won't work very well with excessive TP free from jobs without the subtle blow trait. After all, it's all good if you can slow down or stop your target from casting spells and attacking, but unless players get the amnesia spell in some form, the danger from TP attacks still remains. The difference in enemy TP speed between jobs with cap subtle blow and no subtle blow really is that noticeable. Seriously, you'll see this for yourself in a bit. I think it would be possible for this strategy to work with DPS jobs besides Monk and Dancer, provided a Corsair gave up one of their role slots for Monk's role, a perfect 11 of which would cap out the subtle blow trait completely. That might be a bit of an ask for a pickup group though. <laughs> Ninja also works well as a tank for mage groups. The same rules apply in that a ninja will be slowing down its target through limiting TP feed and keeping on top of its Suzemi shadows, but since it doesn't have to contend with keeping hate off melee DPS, it's in for a much easier time. Depending on the strategy and the element of the burst, a ninja can even contribute to damage, or at the very least lower resistance rates for its backline. As I mentioned back in my ninja guide, elemental ninjutsu lowers the magic evasion of its target to the element that spell opposes. So, in this clip, the skill chain is fragmentation with thunder bursts. I'm therefore using Sweet On before the bursts hit to ensure they hit for full damage. The magic evasion down effects of elemental ninjutsu cannot be resisted, so it's a pretty reliable source of support. While a rune fencer's rake and gambit abilities are stronger in their effects, they're also burdened with lengthy reuse timers, and their effects can also be erased. Elemental ninjutsu has neither of these problems. Ninja also has weapon skills which link well into both level 3 skill chains, so extending a scholar skill chain is also a very effective strategy. Ninja tanks also have a way of potentially saving runs. Under normal circumstances, a tank going down would more often than not result in a wipe, especially during a mage setup, where they're the single tank. While a recovery is possible, tanking while weakened is tough, and it's pretty much impossible on Ninja, as your weakened timers simply won't work with maintaining Utsuzemi. To get around this, a Ninja can hit Nijin Gaka to erase their weakened status and get right back into the fight. Your backline just needs to hold it together for 20 seconds or so. This happened before the clip you're seeing right now, actually. It's a shame it wasn't caught. If using a Ninja tank for a mage setup, it'd be important to have coordination between the Ninja and the backline. You don't want the ninja accidentally using the wrong ninjutsu spell and bursting before the real heavy hitters get their volleys in after all. Yonin stance isn't best suited for maxing out ninjutsu damage either, so making sure these lines don't get crossed is really important. So, in summation, where does a ninja tanking fall short of the established options? Well, if you're facing more than one enemy, then I'd leave the ninja at home, or have them join in a DPS capacity only. This is because ninja tanking is all about maintaining Utsuzemi, and those shadows won't last long with multiple enemies hitting them. 
Enemies which either repeatedly spam AoEs or otherwise have AoE attacks as their default attacks will also make very quick work of a ninja tank. The biggest problem I think though is that the optimal strategy for a ninja tank requires a fair bit of collaboration with a player's group. If you're using DPS jobs like Monk and Dancer, then you're already golden as you're playing to the ninja strengths and giving the entire group an easier time when you do so. You can use Monk's Roll to get rid of this problem entirely, but you'll probably get some players raising their eyebrows at it when suggested. Still, I highly recommend it. Ninja tanking also has a high skill ceiling, so it's going to take a fair bit of practice and know-how, specifically getting into the habit of glancing at your remaining at Susemi Shadows. However, when it's fully realised, I've found the ninja tank strategy to be really damn effective, especially against the omen bosses, and especially when you're fighting something one-on-one. -on -one. You're filling the role of a DPS and a tank in one slot, and unlike the Paladin, and to a lesser extent the Rune Fencer, the ninja has the native tools to do both roles well. Dealing damage while tanking is, if you ask me, one of the better ways to ensure that your target stays off your more vulnerable party members, and this is something a ninja innately excels at. Although it can be the most frail of the tanking options, relatively speaking compared to the alternatives that is, a ninja is still the only job in the game which literally cannot be one-shotted if Megawari is maintained. There are some special attacks which completely bypass Megawari, but generally speaking it's got you covered. Above all, you're probably just going to have a real blast doing this. It's a really engaging, read gripping and intense way of tanking endgame content with a very good result. In the end, I'd say that a ninja is a perfectly viable tank for endgame content, if its strengths are played to. I'll be sure to do other high-end content on the job and make a follow-up video sometime. Until then, I'll see you next time.